Hi, it's Esther at the Trucking Scribe. I have done another tutorial. This time I am making fabric tags or what I would call crazy quilt tags that I sewed on my sewing machine for a swap that we've got going on. I will leave in the description below this um, printout that I'm going to use to make these tags. So just click, go, go down below where it says more and I'll have it on my website to where you can download it. Um, paper piecing is a form of quilting. So if you look behind me and I'm going to put some pictures up in the video, this hot air balloon quilt is pieced by squares and things. I bought that one in Albuquerque. The star porcupine and the one closer to the door back there, the flying geese, those were all paper pieced. The sewing machine was too, but that's the only one in this group that I made. I did make quilts that corresponded with all of those because in inst on Instagram, I did swaps for quilts and I've got several more running around here that I've, I've swapped also where their names are on the back of them, thank goodness, because I forget who they are. <laughs> but I hope you enjoy learning how to make paper pieced tags for your journals. If you don't mind, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and leave me a comment what you think about these and if you would like, if you'd be interested in doing some more quilting techniques within junk journal. Thank you and you guys have a great weekend. So today I'm gonna show you how to do a paper pieced tag. My group in Junk Journal and World we are doing a fabric swap, fabric tag swap, I should say. I went and I like, I love paper pieces. I love quilting. So this was right up my alley. I went and got a tag shape and I just drew lines to where they kind of intersected. And we'll talk about that as we go along. This one goes right here and I just, I trimmed it out. Here's the other one. And we're going to sew directly on this paper. I have a couple of different things here besides my scraps. Now here's my box of scraps. I mean, I've got lots. But in trying to show you guys this, I'm getting a little confused because I'm, I'm trying to think ahead and it's not working in my brain today and I really wanted to get this out for you. So here is some cotton five by five squares that would be great because see it they fit all the way across. Here's another one Mama's Cottage. You get coordinating colors in these. You can buy these at places like Missouri Star Quilt Company. Um, Paducah Fabrics, uh, there's a lot of quilting places, and you can find them on Amazon. I will put a link in the description below to some of these that I like on Amazon. This one, I think I got at Walmart, and I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that, but I think I did. So, if you do click through any of the links in the description below for Amazon, it is an affiliate link, and I will receive a small commission at no charge to you. I think I'll start with this one. And you can see all the bra I love. These would go good with my cookbook one, wouldn't it? So what I'm going to start with is our paper. I forgot you do need like a board, a postcard, piece of card stock. It really helps. So you see the numbers on. So we're going to go and we're going to put one fabric here, one here, one here, 
one layer, one layer, and one layer. But, and we, we're going to do it in that order. That's part of paper piecing. And the beauty of perfection when you do it right. Especially if you're going and you're adding pieces to the quilt. And if you notice behind me in my introduction, I have several quilts that are on my wall. The hot air balloon is from Albuquerque that I bought. The other ones, the porcupine, the, the, book, the bunny, the star, and the flying geese, I got in swaps on Instagram. The sewing machine I made, but for each quilt that I swapped, that I received, I received one back that in some form or fashion. So what we're going to do first, when I quit talking, is you have a right side and a wrong side to your fabric. We're going to get a couple of them over here. So you see this is the printed pre-side, where this is the white background side. Same with this yellow. you got the bright yellow, and you got a light yellow. Over here, this one, same thing. So what I want to do is hold this up. And I'm going to put the fabric on the wrong side. And if you can see my, my line right here, I'm covering that hole number one that with about with at least a quarter of an inch outside of the number one. So I'm going to lay it down. This is where I use my glue stick. And I don't use a lot. I just do like one little swipe just to hold that. So now can you see? I'm trying, yeah, you can see it. So here's the line we're fixing to sew on. And you can tell that I am well outside the lines of number one. Right here. So now we're going to do number two. So lay your tag face down. What you're going to do is take this postcard or cardstock and you're just going to butt it up against that line and fold it over. And that will leave you this. Now I'm going to leave it alone because it is straight right now. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and take another color, the yellow. I'm going to go back on this side. And I need to make sure that the yellow is going to fit in that box. Because this, this is where it gets tricky sometimes. But you see my yellow is in the box. If I lay it down, now I've got right sides together. So if I do it this way, you can see that number two is covered. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to start right outside of the line. And I'm going to sew right down through here straight as I can get it. And I'm actually going to do a little back stitch right there. Just to hold it. Okay, and I went outside the line again. I'm reaching here to, to get all this. So, I over, for a quarter of an inch, I overdid my mark. See, that's what's left. I can take my scissors and trim it down to roughly a quarter of an inch. Then I'm going to turn it back over. And I don't have my iron, so I'm going to use the bone folder and just press that down nice and neat. <coughs> 
I'm going to flip it back over. And we're, we've got our fabric under there kind of as straight as possible. It's flat. So we're going to get this line between two and three. Put our paper right there. Pull that. That's just where we um, backstitch to make that stay. So I'm going to do this one with just the scissors to start with. What I'm, I'm going to attempt to do here. And it's kind of sloppy. I'm not the best at this without my, my measuring things, but hey, you can wing it. So now what I'm going to do is turn this over, and I want to have a fabric that will reach across there. I'm just going to grab another color. And I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to check. There we go. And I can see that my fabric is, even if I fold it like this, like it's going to be when it gets done, we have enough to cover that square. And what I'm going to do is actually turn it this way because when we open, when we open it, it will be right side up this way. So, lay that across. Come back in, in here <laughs> with the paper side up. So you got these two that are attached to the paper facing down. And the, the next piece is facing up. We're going to start right before that line. And I'm just back stitching. And I'm going just past that line. And I'm going to back stitch again just to hold my stitch. my strings cut. So this one I'm going to do with the scissors. The next one I'll do with the Addo quarter inch ruler. That way we've got one of each. So basically we can go ahead. I'm just going to put a little dab of glue right here to hold that for me so I can trim some of this off because what I'm fixing to do is just go around and I'm trimming out, out here as opposed to on that line because this line we are going to, to use later to so our, to make our tag shape, I'll show you. See, here's one. We'll need that to sew down our tag shape. Now we're doing one and four because we've run out of three. So one and four, you just go on up to the next number. You crease it on that line. Once again, we're going to trim that down best we can with scissors. Don't get too close. And we're going to find another piece of fabric. I like this one. And it does, it looks crazy from this side gonna work out though. And so I'm gonna put this right there on that line. I'm gonna turn it around and check that I am in my squares and I want to take my fingers if possible. If not just lay it down like that and kind of pinch it to make sure especially if you have smaller pieces you want to pinch it to, and 
look and make sure that that fabric is showing it in the square. So now I'm going to check and make sure everything is lined up right here on this line. This is face down, the, the paper part. The piece we're sewing on is face up. So we're going to do the same thing, just trim it off. Take my bone folder and I'm just going to trim it this way. And I'm going to put a little dab of glue, that way I can trim some of this off and it's not all over the place. But make sure it is flat down when you start cutting because I don't know how many times I have cut and it being turned over the wrong way and it didn't want to cut for me. So now we're going to go between number four and number five. It's the same thing. Take our card, pull that. That's just tearing the paper, which is fine because we're, we're wanting to do that. Let's see, there's a pretty black one. Let's try that one. So I'm going to take again and just trim this up, eyeballing it. We really don't need a big piece. But I'm going to go ahead and use this one, as, and we can use these scraps later. So again, I've got... my fabric that's paper side facing down and the one I'm sewing on facing up. I'm outside the line of the tag. Oh, one button. There we go. So again, this one's going to be a little piece. We didn't need very much, but in an effort to show you how you could just start with the same sizes. So now I'm just going to trim this out. And I am wasting fabric here, but that's okay. I need one more piece. Let's make sure everything's down where it's supposed to be. And we're going to figure out number six here, which is the last one. And I'm going to trim that somewhere around a quarter of an inch. And I want a different color for down there. Ooh, I like that one. So right sides together. Once again, we want to open it up and make sure that we are covering our spot. And I'm not doing a very good job today. And I'm not. There we go. So we are over our, our little area. We're going to line up our fabric with that one there, turn it over, start outside the line, shape. You gotta be careful right here because I almost messed up. Let's see. I 
And what I'm going to do to go ahead and hold this down, bring this a little closer so I can reach it, is I'm going to make sure that my pieces are down where they need to be. And I'm going to sew right there on that line with the tag. When I get to the corner, I can use my hand, turn it. I want the needle down, pick up the presser foot, and turn your paper to where you're going right along that next line. Make sure that your papers are, or your fabric is down and straight. So now you can see the tag shape on here. See, it runs right around in there. I'm not going to cut it yet. I'm not going to trim it yet because I want to go back and do some quilting and stuff on it. But I wanted to do this other one with you with the add a, root, add a quarter ruler. some of my scraps for this one. See what we got. So the same thing. We got one, two, three, four, five, six. This one is a little more straightforward because there's not a lot of intersecting lines. So we're going to go between one and two and fold that. Just like that. So one is there. Let's see. Will this one cover one? Yeah, it looks like it will. See? Right there. So what I'm going to do is take my glue stick and I'm just going to put a little dab of glue right there to hold this piece. And I want it about a quarter of an inch over where I'm going to be sewing. stick. Then, remember I did my piece right here. So number two, I'm going to use this red. I'm going to line up the pieces. And you can use um, pins if you want. And I'm checking to make sure that, see this is where I need pins, that my number two is going to be covered up. So number one is face down, touching number two. Number two is face up. Our paper is face up. We're right outside that line. I sewed again to the line. So what I want to do is take this, press it back. And with my postcard, so this has a lip on it to help you be able to to measure that quarter of an inch. I think I have a an eighth to somewhere, I don't know. So we're going two and three. And now what I'm going to do instead of the scissors is I'm just going to put that up against the card. I got my rotary cutter and just cutting. 
Make sure you're holding that ruler though. So now you turn it over, you've got a nice neat edge there for that that edge. Let's see. Let me do this one. I think I'm gonna hold it up. Make sure that I'm covering up my my three pretty good, yep. Y'all are saying, what in the world is this crazy woman doing? So once again, the paper that's sewn, the fabric sewn to the paper is face down. The fabric you are attaching is face up. You're right outside the tagline. No backstitch. So all you're doing is following that line to get your straight lines. It really is cool. So what I'm going to take my bone folder again and I'm just going to even that up. And if you look on this side, you'll see that it's basically already got a quarter of an inch from where we trimmed it the first time. So now we're going to three and four. Just put it there. And we're going to take and put the ruler up against the card, holding the ruler really tight with your fingers, closing the rotary cutter. And I don't need this up here, so I'm going to trim it off out of my way. So now I'm looking for a piece number four. Let me turn it over. So something that would fit right in there. It's nice and colorful. How about this? Yeah. So I'm going to turn this over. And let's pin this, see if I can show you what I'm talking about. So I'm pinning right about the line. I'm wanting that fabric to be inside that space for number four. So paper up. Start outside the line. I'm going to press that and come over here and just trim this up. I don't need that much. I'll do this one too. Just trim it so I've got a little bit more room to work. So now we are, we've done four. We need five. We're going to go back to one and five. Fold that over. Take my add a quarter ruler, butt it up against there. Have my rotary cutter. Keep your fingers out of the way and just cut. And it'll give you your quarter inch. So what have we not used? Or what have we used? Let's see. We'll do this black one this time. So I'm putting it against each other again. My piece will cover the little section for five. Pattern face up, outside the line, outside the tag line. Do a little back stitch. Make sure the new fabric, the that you're attaching is on the bottom face up. Then you have the paper pattern and the paper and the fabric that's attached to it face down. So 
So it is somewhat quicker, less a mess when you use that ruler. I thought I was something when I first found it. I'll tell you. And the smaller one for this would be perfect, but I don't know where it's at right now. So I'm using the 12 inch one. So once again, we folded our paper back on the five and the six line, the one right there in the middle, folded it back, taking my quarter inch ruler, button it up against that, trimming it. And when you trim, make sure this is face up like that. So now we're gonna do number six. What do we want that one to be? What about, what about red? I got some red, will that make it? So how we know if it'll make it is we can turn it over this way, actually this way, because it's gonna be face down. And you can see that it will cover that. But double check again when you turn it over because these things can get turned sideways when you're first learning how to do all this. So see, I'm going to take and hold it up just to make sure. See right here, it's almost over. So I'm going to move it a little bit further down that way. And some of it's probably my estimation of seam allowance. So now we're over that and we're over here. So we're good. So again, new fabric face up right here. Pattern is face up and the fabric attached to the pattern is face down. Line your lines up with the fabrics underneath. So I don't know if I'm explaining this, especially for newer beginner paper piecers. I would be happy to try and explain whatever I'm not explaining, but you'll have to leave me a comment or something so I know what, you, what is not clear. Uh, definitely any questions let me know right now what I'm gonna do is sew all this down around the outside tag line so if I wanted to I could go ahead and finish the tag right here and trim it up and glue on a backing but I'm not gonna do that we still got a few more steps that I want to do first I'm gonna change thread color so maybe we can see it better because this one is not very bright. Trim this excess off. Just to make it easier to, to deal with. You just don't want to go over your, your lines. See, these can be maybe used I may have cut them too short, but I'm going to throw them in my maybe pile. So I would like a thread that would show up on this. I wonder if the yellow would show up. It would on the blacks. Maybe the reds. Let's try that. To show y'all how to thread a needle or thread the sewing machine or whatever you call it. Y'all know what I mean. So 
I'm taking this. There's a hole right there in the middle that that will pop that will pop on. And it's always the bottom. The, this here's the top with the name and all. And that's the bottom. Put it on there. We'll go through here. Yeah, my little thing. It's not supposed to be up there. But if you look at the top, it shows you how to this one is if you're doing the regular sewing machine. This is if you're winding the bobbin, which we're not doing right now. We're just... So we go through one, come down two, go down under three, back up to four. And you see right there that little... Right here that metal piece there is a hook you go in there and it hooks around it so then five you come down and you go right in there and just follow those guides which is easier said than done when you haven't done it before I do have a quilting foot on my sewing machine because I can't find my other foot So once you get through the needle, you need to bring up a piece of thread, especially if you're doing the bottom. So what I'm going to do, because I want my tag to be sturdier, I'm going to put it on this. And because I want this to show up, I know I'm going to be covering up my you could still journal in the little areas, but I think that's prettier like that. And I'm going to just take and do like a, a glue right down the middle. I'm not going to glue it a lot because we're fixing to sew it. And this is heavier weight cardstock. And I am going to pull you in where I can, we can see each other better. So over here, you see all these different things that are on here. We've got buttonholes and flowers and hearts and whoop-de-doos and everything else. And to change, to get these, you move these two buttons right here to the number like two zero. So I go to twenty right here. Or if I wanted to do fifty-three, I go up. To 53 which is going to be our first one so this is glued on it's just tacked on what I'm going to do is I am going to do some crazy quilting on here and you could put some batting but I'm not going to put any on no so I'm just going to follow these seams and I'm putting this part right here to where it's going down the middle of my foot and I'm starting outside the line of the tag you can see the stitching line that I did and just let the machine do what it's going to do because this is not like regular sewing you're gently holding it guiding it through Now I'm back outside of my stitching line. It's not showing up as well as I want it, but right here, it's got a little design. The yellow and the yellow didn't show up good. I like 58. Let's try that one. Maybe it'll show up. Let's try it. 
try that and see. Now you could change your threads every time you did a different little line or you could have a lot of these made and just do one one line at a time and they put them have them come out differently and I'm gonna trim this I can see the line right there and I'm trying to trim outside of what I just stitched. So like right here, it's going to be close because I got very close. <laughs> and just take your time. It's not going to be perfect unless you use a rotary cutter or you could get out a... So those look really nice. I do like them. Thank you for spending the afternoon making fabric tags with me. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you haven't already subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. And if you like the video, hit the like button. And we will see you next time.